Welcome to this special edition of County Report This Week. I'm Susan Kennedy. Each week, we give you a look at what's going on inside Montgomery County. From politics to schools to public safety to the arts, there's a lot happening here, and 2012 was a busy year. During this show, we will show you some of the standout stories that defined Montgomery County. And we begin with the new back tax law that went into effect January 1st of 2012. The tax was created to reduce the number of plastic bags that end up clogging this county's water waves. We were out and about as shoppers were getting accustomed to bringing reusable bags to the supermarket. County Executive Ike Leggett spearheaded the distribution of free reusable bags. Shoppers that entered the Safeway supermarket at the Hillandale Plaza were greeted with a gift to avoid paying five cents for a shopping bag. Now that people are focused on the bags and focused on the cost and focused on the environmental effort, I think that we now see a very good response from people who now understand what the law is. Under the law, retailers must charge five cents for each paper or plastic carry-out bag they provide to customers at the point of sale. I think a lot of people have been anticipating it. We've had signs at the check stands for a while, and a lot of people bring their own bags anyway. But uh, for those that have to pay the nickel, I think that they realize that the money is going for a good cause. It's going to help the environment, and the nickel isn't a huge fee, but we're happy that people are choosing to bring their own reusable bags into the store, so it's a win-win situation. At this Safeway, some customers seemed puzzled with a new law. If you bring your own bag, you should get a credit so much five or ten cents off for every bag you bring in as you fill up with and not use their plastic bags. Revenues collected will be directed to watershed restoration and litter cleanup. Plastic bags are one of the top items found in county streams and stormwater controls. The county spends approximately three million dollars annually for litter prevention and pickup. It's been some glitches when it first started because people was complaining, you know, about why they have to pay for the bags and they're shopping in the stores. But, you know, I feel that, you know, it, it helps us as well as the environment. And they said that it's only five cents, you know, for the bag. You know, I mean, the, the five cents, yeah, the taxes for the bag. And, um, and they're giving out the free bags today, so that's a good thing. A number of businesses donated reusable bags for distribution by the county most of which have been provided to low-income residents. In May of 2012, the County Council voted to approve an amended version of the ambulance fee. A similar proposal was rejected by voters in 2010. However, County Executive Ike Leggett reintroduced the bill to offset the shift of teacher pension costs by the state. In the end, the Council voted to approve the fee by a vote of 6 to 3. The fee would be charged to patients, but paid by health insurance. People without health insurance and those below a certain income level would not have to pay the fee. And so what was uh, convincing to me was when the county executive in his approach this time said, we will make it very clear that no Montgomery County resident will be charged for anything, for any reason. Uh, and uh, that was good enough for me. And also that we're using um, someone from the Office of Consumer Protection to be a patient advocate. I can't think of anything more important than that right now. And also that the bill has a sunset date so that we can gather information, we can see if it's working. Now within the bill, it does state very clearly that if you don't have insurance, you will not receive a bill. We have created a position in the Department of Consumer Protection, which is very important to make sure that if there are any types of issues or misinformation, that they're going to be addressed. You know, all of these different components are really, really critical, in my opinion, in making sure that the public then understands. County Executive Leggett praised the council for its approval of the EMS reimbursement fee. If you look at the facts, this is a very, very clear case. We are the only jurisdiction in the entire region without this. There are none of these horror stories that people have talked about and realized. We are already paying for this. We could collect huge amounts of monies from the federal government as a result of this. $17 million a year when we've just been handed from the state a huge budget uh, challenge to us, about uh, $400 million. This is something we should do, and I hope that message gets out loud and clear. The county council decided to adopt this, and I want to thank them for their leadership in this role. But I think the rest of the, the citizens of Montgomery County should re understand what the facts are, and I think if, if so, they would vote appropriately if there is, in fact, a referendum on this matter. 
As always, the weather was in the news here in Montgomery County. The severe storm that blew through our area in June of 2012 left a path of devastation and destruction, most of it caused by falling trees. Montgomery County had all boots on the ground in this massive cleanup effort. All around Montgomery County, you could see and hear the remnants of the storm that took residents completely by surprise. Well, I wasn't here when it happened, and I think that was a lucky thing. Um, so my neighbors called me right after it happened. One of the limbs went right through the roof into the bedroom, and again, it was like 10 feet away from where I would have been in the bed. County police called in extra officers to direct traffic, but there were some folks who took advantage of economic opportunities as a result of power outages. Randy Sparks came up from Mississippi just to sell generators. They're just, they're just fed up with it. They're, they're ready to get something done, and, and, and you can't, can't blame them. I mean, they're just, people are just ready to, to get their power back, and it's not, not anybody's fault. It just, it's just part of the nature. But even through the devastation, folks were able to maintain their sense of humor. I realize being upset doesn't accomplish anything. So I just sort of have to do the next thing. And uh, right now I think it's a great birdhouse. <laughs> and following the storm, hundreds of thousands of residents were left without power for several days. Frustrated council members grilled Pepco officials over the utility company's performance. They say this has become a quality of life issue for county residents. We need better performance, not more PR. Council members were visibly frustrated with PEPCO officials as they appeared to answer questions about the outages from the derecho storms that caused monumental power outages throughout the region. Council President Berliner told PEPCO President Tom Graham, Doug Nazarian of the Maryland Public Service Commission, and others on the panel that the way PEPCO does business is simply unacceptable. And we need to realize we have an antiquated utility system that does not come close to meeting the need for highly reliable, clean, and efficient power in the 21st century. The council hearing room was packed with angry residents carrying homemade signs criticizing PEPCO, but PEPCO officials defended their company's response to the storm. Is it possible to restore service to 483,000 customers in under a week? Uh, no utility that I'm aware of can recover that quickly from a catastrophic event of that magnitude. In 2010, the Maryland Public Service Commission fined PEPCO $1 million for failures that led to massive outages after late winter snowstorms. And just this week, the commission rejected $50 million of the $68 million increase requested by the company because of its substandard performance. They said that there will be no rate increase to pay for past neglect, past underinvestment. And if the PSC holds true to that for the coming years, that's going to make a big difference for ratepayers. Up next on County Report This Week, a year in review. It was a history making session in Annapolis in 2012. We'll bring you that story. And a special group of county athletes who made their mark this summer at the 2012 Olympics. When County Report This Week, a year in review continues. Going shopping this holiday season? Coming up with the perfect gift for everyone on your list isn't easy. It takes a lot of creativity to get the right gift for the right person. But when you find the perfect gift, don't add to your holiday stress. Be prepared when you stop to shop. You don't have to be this creative. Be sure to bring your reusable bags. Bring your bag. Fight litter. Welcome back to County Report This Week Year in Review Special. It was a history-making year in Annapolis in 2012 as the Maryland House of Delegates and Senate voted to legalize same-sex marriage. We work very hard to reconcile these two great values, uh, equal rights for all and institutional religious freedom 
in this legislation? The Supreme Court has said that the right to marry is a fundamental right, and I think in our daily lives we understand that it's a fundamental right, and it's a right that's so fundamental that mass murderers have been able to marry people that they meet through the National Enquirer uh, while on death row, deadbeat dads who've been married several times before have the right to get married again, and you know, and you know, we've got presidential candidates who've been married multiple times who are lecturing constituents of mine who want to just marry once about how marriage is between one man and one woman. And I think that maybe they mean one man and one woman at one time, but there's certainly a lot of people who have exercised that right multiple times. Shouldn't every Marylander at least have the chance to get married once to the person that they love and they're committed to? Raskin was confident the 25 votes from last year's session were still intact and that there would possibly be even more signing on in favor of the measure. After that hurdle is cleared, legislators will be moving on to the nitty gritty, the budget and taxes, specifically the gas tax. We have a lot of needs in Maryland to pay for transportation. And so one of the options is to look at the gas tax. There's a proposal out there from the governor to do that. And we're going to have a lot of discussion about that. Uh, I don't think anyone knows exactly where this is going to go or if the support is there. People are certainly concerned about the, the gas price is going up, so the timing may not be ideal to, to talk about uh, gas taxes. Without additional revenues, though, our transportation trust fund is depleted. And if we're going to have the kind of investments that I fully support, the Purple Line is so important for us in Montgomery County, then we are going to have to find sources of revenue. Uh, and that was the, what the intention of the gas tax uh, has been. And in the 2012 general election, Maryland voters upheld the state's same-sex marriage law. Maryland and Maine are the first in the country to approve measures by a popular vote. During the 2012 Olympics, we had several local athletes who became the toast of the town. In this next piece from Sonia Burke, we take you to a celebration where swimmer and gold medalist Katie Ledecky, kayaker Scott Parsons, and rhythmic gymnast Julie Zetlin were honored for their hard work, dedication, and talent. We had 20 people with ties to the district, Maryland, and Virginia at the Olympics, but no city or town or municipality had more than Bethesda. Swimmer Katie Ledecky, kayaker Scott Parsons, and rhythmic gymnast Julie Zetlin were honored for their Olympic accomplishments by local officials and residents. Katie, at 15, the youngest athlete on the U.S. team, brought home a gold medal in the 800-meter freestyle. Look at that, a gold medal. Isn't that unbelievable? Katie, just like Chris said, it's really amazing the effect your win had on the community. Um, really, it's and all anyone talked about for two or three days. We all kind of felt like proud family members watching you guys. It was Scott's third Olympics, and he finished his kayaking event in 16th place. While Julie overcame multiple knee surgeries to earn a place on the Olympic team and was the lone American to qualify as a rhythmic gymnast. You can feel it right here that we are all one in our enthusiasm and our incredible respect for people who work so very hard for so long. You've all inspired the country and so we're, we're so proud of you. After receiving proclamations and plaques, the athletes thank their fans for the hometown love and support. I'd like to just thank everybody for this fantastic event. Um, I think we all really appreciate the, the recognition and uh, the support of Bethesda. I'm just trying to get the name out there for my sport, so it's really great to see all the hometown love. It's, it feels great. I can't thank you all enough for your, your support. We could, really, we could really hear your cheering in London, and, and you guys are the best. In Bethesda, I'm Sonia Burke reporting. The week of April 15, 2012 was Public School Volunteer Week, which encourages volunteerism and also celebrates the parents and community members who give of their time and expertise to enhance the education of our children. One such volunteer is Vietnam War veteran Wayne Miller, who has been sharing his war experiences with students at Gaithersburg High School for 20 years. For 20 years, Vietnam veteran Wayne Miller has been volunteering at Gaithersburg High School, helping to bring history to life. They said when you go out on patrol, you cannot shoot until you're shot at first. 
Mr. Miller connects with students as he shares his war experiences, including his nearly fatal battle injury that resulted in the amputation of his left leg. I come into the school to give the kids a personal view of what one person did in Vietnam. I look in the audience today and my heart is full because I see blacks, whites, Hispanics, Asians all sitting together, talking together, eating together, learning together, and it just fills my heart and says, you know, maybe I did fight for something. Mr. Miller shared his remarkable journey of recovery and how he overcame many obstacles to fulfill his dreams and become a contributing member of society. I want the students to never give up on their dream that they can reach anything they want to do if they just keep on trying. I learned that like even though people go through like really bad and tough times, you know, it's good to keep your mind, you know, focused on one point, don't lose your goals. I really took away that through all these struggles, you could find like a bright light in the end. I'm not into history, but learning it from someone who actually has been there, it creates a much more interesting like feeling for it. And I learned a lot more. When students hear it from a person who's actually there, as opposed to read an article, it stays with them much longer, and they get they 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 get it. Then it leaves a much deeper impression on them. To thank him for his two decades of service, the school presented Mr. Miller with a Gaithersburg High School Letterman jacket. While Mr. Miller's oral history lessons directly affect students and their studies, there are many other ways that community members can help make our schools stronger. Whether reading to students, becoming a homework tutor, serving as a mentor, or helping to organize a school event, consider becoming a school volunteer in 2013. When we come back, we'll take you to the fifth anniversary celebration for the Rockville Town Center. And a story about one county nonprofit that is working to lift local families out of poverty. We'll be right back. This season, don't let a holiday celebration become a tragedy. If you're drinking, designate a driver. If anyone in your party has had too much to drink, see that they get a ride home with someone sober or call them a taxi. If you need a ride home, call Sober Ride at 800 200 Taxi. Sober Ride will give you a free ride home up to a $30 fare. For more information on taxi service in Montgomery County, go to our website at montgomerycountymd.gov. Welcome back to this special Year in Review edition of County Report This Week. This year, Montgomery College had a successful fall sports season highlighted by some big news both on and off the field. Here's MCTV's Michael Brown with those details. The fall sports season kicked off with MC welcoming Derek Carter as the new interim athletic director. He brings extensive NCAA experience to the job. So I worked in Tennessee as assistant AD for about five years and then went back to Virginia Tech as assistant AD for six years and then I served as athletic director at Virginia State, Bowie State and Delaware State University. Carter oversees athletics on all three campuses as part of the college's unification and reinvigoration of the program. We'll be unified as uh, all of our teams can be under one umbrella uh, administratively we're unified. Over time, I believe you'll see the students really uh, believe in the one college and the athletes can support each other. And just overall, it will be a positive thing. And Carter liked what he saw during the fall season at MC. Volleyball finished third in Maryland Juco with a strong 15 and five mark. Women's soccer turned in a very solid season under first year coach Brad Harton. And men's soccer quite simply had an historic season. Under first-year coach Pedro Braz, they won Maryland Juco for the first time in school history, took the Region 20 title, and ascended to the national tournament. The first trip by an MC men's team since 1988. It was an experience that I'll always remember for the rest of my life. Um, and that's what I told these uh, student athletes. I told them, regardless, I will be coaching for the rest of my life. 
But for them, it's really, it's really, it really came down to them because this experience may never happen to them ever again. Their dream of the title was narrowly dashed one to nothing when Herkimer scored the only goal of the championship finals in the second overtime. But that result took nothing away from what this team really achieved this season. And that's what we try to leave. It's that foundation. It's, it's getting something started, planting the seeds, so then uh, we, we, we can make something grow. And, um, and that's from the beginning. That's, I, I told these guys, and I, and, I, and I told them from the beginning, it's, we have to leave this legacy. We have to leave something here that people can remember you for, for the rest of their lives. For County Report This Week at Montgomery College, I'm Michael Brown. Good luck to all of the athletes at Montgomery College in 2013. The Rockville 11 team joined residents as well as city and county officials to wish Rockville Town Square a happy birthday. A five-year birthday, that is, and our Rockville 11's Bridget Breuer was there to cover the story. It was the biggest birthday party in Rockville as residents and officials celebrated five years of Rockville Town Square. Happy birthday to you. Rockville Town Square. Happy birthday to you. The space has come a long way since former Mayor Larry Giamo took office in 2001. He put the wheels in motion for the project that would revitalize downtown Rockville. The plan called for a mixed use development with a unique public and private partnership. Today, Giamo feels that his vision is realized. I think we really aim for a high quality experience here. A lot of thought and effort went into it. Uh, a lot of great partnership here too. We had all four levels of government, all the community stakeholders involved, great private sector developers. So really trying to create a fantastic new heart for the community. And I think it turned out the way we hoped it would. Town Square truly is one of Rockville's success stories. Even throughout the downturned economy, people were still coming here to dine, people were still coming here to shop, and how important it is to the fabric of Rockville and that it's really a part of the community. While Rockville Town Square has become the new center of the city, there's much more to come. Remember, this is really uh, meant to be a catalyst. And we're, the Choice Hotels is coming in, that'll open next year. Dawson's Market opening will help greatly when uh, Phase 2 North of Bell Avenue is put in and Duval Project uh, across from Regal. Then you really have the synergy and the critical mass. For more information on Rockville Town Square, go online to rockvilletownsquare.com. Looking back at 2012, one of our picks for a story that made an impact was a feature on one county nonprofit that is making a difference for those who are less fortunate here. A Wider Circle is a nonprofit organization in Montgomery County. Its goal is to give dignity and hope to those in need. The group distributes food and clothes, and its warehouse full of furniture in Silver Spring rivals any other retail establishment. The poverty number may be around 75,000, but the number in need is probably closer to 200,000. Those who have the means, the stuff, the time, there's probably five or six to every one that needs help. So we can do it. The math is in our favor. I mean, prior to this working here, I'd, I wasn't aware that there were so many people in this area that were impoverished. It just, it just shocked me. To not have you know, a dining room table to eat in as a family or a bed to sleep on. The furniture we get, we bring in, and within 24 hours, it's gone. In the big picture, poverty endures because we are not as connected to one another as we need to be. Montgomery County started supporting us in 2008, and that was really at a time where we could then grow. We said, okay, we have a little bit of funding and maybe some help paying for a warehouse. We moved to this facility, first taking 5,000 square feet and now occupying about 21,000 square feet. We can make it a dignified showroom, so it almost looks like a furniture store. We save families at least $1,500 that happens to just have everything for free. Everything we get, mattresses, couches, chairs, anything fabricated, all gets steamed to help prevent against bugs. I mean, I'm with my brother. Just kind of down on his luck. Um, he had an injury to his leg, so he's unable to work, you know, furnish his apartment. And it's nice that people, you know, donate items that, you know, can be reused and used now. I got Beds, living room set, bedroom set, dinette set, toys for the kids, and I'm blessed.
When I see a person who needs help, I can think, that person needs help, I could need help someday. So of course, if I help that person, I'm really helping myself. That's how we exist here at a wider circle, and that's how I think we have to perceive it as a county. All right, have a good day, my friend. All right. We were founded to bring a positive energy uh, and optimism to the service of those in need. And so everything we do, from our staff meetings to the service of the people when they come, to our pickups around the region, everything we do is, is infused with that positive energy and spirit. Up next in our Year in Review special, the story of a young county musician who has his eye on a Grammy. Stay with us. Sign up for Montgomery College Alert today. Receive college closing, delay, and emergency information via text message and email. The service also sends important information about Montgomery County weather and traffic events. MC men's soccer star Kevin Andino has been named first team All-American by the NJCAA. Andino, a freshman defender, also made first team All-Maryland JUCO and helped lead the Raptors to a second place finish in the nation this fall. MC's Cybersecurity Club's Digital Forensics team took first place at the Maryland Digital Forensics Investigation Challenge, a live action interactive simulation of a criminal case from beginning to end. They will now move on to the prestigious Global Cyber Olympics team competition. Welcome back to County Report This Week, a year in review. It's no secret Montgomery County is a community full of talent. But earlier in 2012, I had the opportunity to catch up with one young county man who plays the electric guitar like it's nobody's business. When Nate Foley was just four years old, he told his parents he wanted to play the electric guitar. At first, he says, they didn't take him seriously. I just wanted to play the electric guitar, the electric guitar specifically, not the acoustic or anything, just electric. After getting his first guitar for his seventh birthday, <laughs> Nate Foley spent hours listening to music from all genres and began to play music by ear. Today, Nate is a phenom of sorts. This guitar prodigy is an eight-time winner of the Apollo Theater's Amateur Night, something that's never been done before. Nate studies at the Levine School of Music at Strathmore and as part of the Artist in Residence program was given the opportunity to perform two concerts at the mansion. He played with his fusion band, FLLD, and used the show to announce the release of his second album. He's obviously talented, but talent only takes you so far. What, what propels you forward and allows you to reach your highest potential is hard work. Eric Ulrich has been Nathan's guitar instructor since he was nine years old. He says by watching and listening, Nate has been able to develop his own unique voice. So it takes a commitment, uh, a daily commitment, um, and a big commitment of your time. Foley says he calls himself a soul guitarist because he tries to communicate to people's spirits and souls through his music. This year he received three nominations from the Washington Area Music Awards and took home the award for New Artist of the Year. This 17-year-old says he is ready to move on to college to study popular and commercial music. Maurice Foley says Nate's path has been paved in a way they could have never imagined. A, a lot of what we do is just trying to prepare him so that when he leaves the house, he's able to take on all the responsibilities, the, the business side, the professional side, and, and also have the kind of character that um, you really need not just to be successful in music, but just to be successful in life. And Nate's dreams? Well, should we just say, move over, Jimi Hendrix. Well, my dreams are I want to go to the Grammys next year and I want to win a Grammy before I'm 22. So those, those are my two big goals. Well, that's all we have for this special year in review edition of County Report this week. 
Thanks for watching, and we will continue to be here with all the news you need to know about Montgomery County. I'm Susan Kennedy. Happy New Year.